Hey folks, today I'm doing another winter install. I'm finally upgrading my stock handlebars to the KST Custom Mayhem Bagger 10 inch bars. So this is gonna be a lengthy video, so we'll go ahead and get started. So we're gonna to have to take off the fairing. And as you can see, I got some protective cover for my tank and I put like a towel on my fender. So something, something to consider when you're getting ready to work on your bike, which I'm sure you already know. Um, but on each side of the inner fairing, you have two bolts, total of four. That's a T27. And I could, as you can see, I've already loosened them. So you got a shorter T27 bolt at the bottom and then up here at the top, you have a long T27. So just remember long at the top, short at the bottom. There's also three T27 bolts here at the top. And depending if you have windshield trim or maybe some bags in the back like I do, you know, if you don't have those things, it's gonna make it a lot easier. I leave the center bolt in um, just so this the fairing won't fall down. That way I can just go ahead and get my windshield out. And then I have my bags. And get your windshield trim. And there's a lot of bugs and crud in there. I'm gonna place my bolt back in there so I can just put this stuff away. I'm gonna remove the fairing. Last bolt, center bolt. Slowly lean it towards me. And should be some headlock connections. And then in my case, I have a bezel. All right, I'm gonna start by taking off the turn signals. These are a half inch acorn nut. You have a plug here for your turn signals. A little tab there, press down, pops right out. You're gonna have a double stud here on each side. This is a 9 16 Now we'll just get the other side. So now with the turn signals removed and the double stud, I can remove the lower outer fairing skirt. This is gonna allow me to tilt the uh, fairing forward so I can get to the risers. So in order to get the uh, dash panel off here near the ignition, I need to take the two bolts on each side. They're 5 30 seconds, so I'll do that now. On to the other side. So since I got the bolts off, I'm gonna take off this dash panel. Um, there is some cables there for accessories and they're kind of deadheaded. You can kind of see that in there. Just kind of need to un-loosen those and then pull off the dash panel. So I ended up taking the ignition switch off. You had to turn all the way to uh, four o'clock and there's a button here that you have to press. See it right there? And then it'll lift right off. I wanna free up the right and left handlebar switches. So this is the cables, the wiring harness for the right handlebar switch. So that's just a little tab there. And that's two wires. And this is for the left. You also notice here, I don't know how well you can see that, but there is a zip tie holding the brake lines and the clutch uh, lever line. Uh, so I'm gonna snip those off so I can free them up to give a little bit more slack. They're also in here in a, like a kind of like a cable management That'll free up a little bit more slack. And I also have heated grips, and but I actually soldered mine, so that's a little different task in its own. And 
and that frees up the uh, brake and clutch lines. And like I was showing you here, um, you can take these out of this cable management. You can see it's it's freeing them up. Here is your twist grip sensor. It's way back up in there. See it right there. Uh, or also known as your throttle by wire. All right, so something I learned while putting heating grips on is you gotta shimmy the brake and clutch lever, which really means just to get something in there, like a piece of cardboard, so you don't uh, mess up the switches, you know, shear them on each side. Um, I don't really know if that's really true for these, this particular year, you know, it being a 15, but better safe than sorry. This is, like I said, it's something that was in the instructions for the heated grips. So something to keep in mind. And that, again, that's for both uh, brake and clutch lever. There are some uh, zip ties along the handlebars. I already clipped one here and all the way down towards the riser. So you're gonna have to start clipping those on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the mount for the uh, clutch. This is actually a perch mount for Ciro, so this will obviously be different if you don't have this. This is a 3 16 All right, that frees up the uh, clutch. So we'll just let that hang for right now. I'm gonna get a towel real quick to cover up my uh, lower fairing. Now for the switch housing, this is a T25. I already broke the bolt earlier. As you can see here, there's a little trip button and you need to get that off in order to get the housing off. So it pops open. And there should be a little catch underneath here. Here's the little catch. It snaps right in there as soon as you pop it right back in. So it's kind of hard to see. Just use a screwdriver, get up underneath there and kind of twist. So now just remove the housing. Like so. Notice the screws don't come out so on how well you can see that but there is a little clip holding the housing together and there you go it is free you'll notice here that uh, I have a power wire so this grip is going to have to hang down because it's going all the way down to um, underneath the tank and connected to the battery. So we'll go ahead and take that off. And there you have it. Alright, after that I was able to go ahead and pull through the switch that I, you saw me unplug earlier. So get this ready to be installed on the new bars. Okay, now I'll be taking care of the right side and there is a per zero perch mount like there was on the left. Uh, so now I'll take off the brake master cylinder. And just let that dangle. I'll be taking off the right switch housing. Again, this is a T25. Again, like before, there is a little clip right here holding this. Just take a screwdriver and 
There's that clip, just clips right in. Let that dangle for just a second. I'm gonna remove the end cap on the throttle side. Just use some kind of wedge. I'm gonna use a little plastic wedge that I have. Just wedge it in there, pops right out. I don't know how well you can see that. This is where the uh, throttle grip plugs into the throttle by wire. Take a pair of needle nose pliers. Just pull that out. As you can see, it also released the grip. Pulled it out. That's what it looks like. It's like a two prong plug in. Plugs right into there. Now I'm going to raise up on the fairing and tilt it back so I can get to the riser. Now, as you can see, that'll expose some of the wires. And obviously, you can see the riser. So, let's go ahead and get that off. We'll, we'll snip off some more of these uh, twi uh, zip ties. I'm pulling out the switch harness that we unplugged before. So, that's the one from the right side. So this is a quarter inch uh, Allen or hex. Probably a lot better if you had somebody to, uh, be a lot better if you had somebody to uh, hold the bars. I do not. After you've moved the, uh, the riser plate, you're gonna find additional zip ties in here that's uh, <coughs> tying up the, uh, the brake and clutch cables. So just be careful not to snip anything. And like so. And there should be another one over here by the riser. Yeah, here it is. You just want to get as much slack as you can. Um, obviously, so you don't have to replace these. And it shouldn't, you know, these are 10 inches. You shouldn't have to replace them with 12s either. There we go. There we go. So as you can see, I put the uh, riser cap back on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the riser bushings because they are rubber. And I bought the polyurethane ones since I'm going into from stock to a 10 inch so I'll do that now so when I have to move this fairing forward again so I don't know why you can see that but right here is a three-quarter inch bolt which will allow you to get to the riser bushings so we'll go ahead and take that off on both sides now there's one all right as you can see I was get the, able to get the two bolts out. Um, and here is the riser and it has a ground wire to it. So I just pushed it over to the side. There's a cup washer, as you can see here on both of them and one, one on the bottom. And here you see a spacer and you can see, as you can see, these are rubber. Some will knock the spacer and the bottom cup out. You don't have your fender covered it's a good time to do it here is the spacer this is what's coming out and as you can see these are rubber bushings there's the bottom one here's the top one the spacer in between so it would have went like this so if you've never changed them out this is what it looks like just rubber bushings spacer and two caps you actually won't need any of this because when you get the new polyurethane bushings it's just top one bottom one bushing and then the bolt all right so here are the polyurethane bushings as, as you can see and then i got a kit so it came with everything kind of didn't have a choice i was in a time crunch so all you need to do just kind of work it in 
just kind of twist it. Once you get the new riser bushing started, just take a small soft mallet uh, to push down on the top and push up from the bottom. Uh, if you didn't notice before, to get to the left one, you got to turn the forks all the way to the right and turn the forks all the way to the left to get to the right one. Now I got to get the uh, throttle by wire, or also known as the TGC, the throttle grip sensor, through the stock handlebars. And also you see this is the cable for the heated grip going onto the left side. Um, so I kind of dissected um, the throttle by wire connector. I pulled back the uh, wire covers and there's six cables here. And I pulled this cap back and then you have like a rubber, kind of like a weather seal. And then this came out of here as well where the connectors um, connect to the uh, female end. And then I also made note of the, the color of the cables. I wrote those down. And then from this side where I can see the, the connector um, part number, and you have gray, purple, red, then underneath from le also left to right, black, blue, and brown. You'll have to take like a little pin here to, to get each little connector out, push it down, and it comes right out like so. This way I can wrap these in electrical tape and hopefully get them through the, uh, the bars. I wanted to mention that I did use a combination of a pick and this little screwdriver to kind of pry stuff out on each side. All right, now that I got the connector housing off, now you can take this weather seal off just slide them through there like so one at a time slides right through all right there's that then you also need to take this off or it will potentially get stuck in the bars there's only one way these will go in and out, so just kind of wiggle them through. That frees those up. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, electrical tape around that. Not much. Just want to protect it. I don't know if it's going to mess up those connectors as it's going through the, the bar. Better safe than sorry. <clears throat> and I've already started I'm pulling these through a little bit just to get a head start it's just a pull or should we push and pull feeding the the cable that frees up the throttle by wire okay now I want to get started on putting all the cabling in the new KST bars. But first I want to explain what I'm using to uh, get the cabling through. I actually have a steel braided uh, cable and I actually taped some paracord to it. That way once it gets so far, I can actually just pull it through. And uh, this is flexible, but at the top of these bars, it's like a pointed shape so, uh, this definitely makes it a lot easier. And how I got this through is I blew the string using air compressor straight through. So I'm gonna start with the right side of the handlebar, which is the hardest since you have the throttle on that side. So in order to get these through the bars, I am gonna tape these together kind of a straight line like so. Now I'm gonna tape it to the cable. Send it through, feed it through the 
new bars and then pull. Now that the cable's through, we can take the tape off and you will need uh, wiring harness extensions, which I got. Uh, this is for the right side, two connectors. And there's our wire extensions. Earlier in the video, I'd mentioned I'd soldered the heated grip cable for the left side into the throttle by wire. I went ahead and cut that back. I'm gonna re-solder because otherwise I will be sending all the way from the right handlebar all the way over to the left. It's easier just to come back this through this way. So tape this up and we'll send it through. All right, I got the throttle by wire through the uh, bars. I gotta take the, all the uh, black tape off. Okay, now I'm taping up the left switch harness and then send that through the uh, new bars. As you can see, I've pulled through the right and left switch harness. Here's the throttle by wire. And I need to solder the cabling for the heated grips. And then I also need to put the connector back to the way it was before I sent it through. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Gray, purple, red on top, black, blue, brown on the bottom. All right, so send that back. Then all we have to do is Put this little weather seal on. All right, got the throttle by wire ready to go, all taped up. Connector is back in place. The cable for the heated grip is all soldered and taped up as well. Time to put her on the bike. As you can see, I got the handlebars installed on the bike now. Just need to do some cable management. Send, uh, Throttle by wire, harness, switch harnesses to in on through so I can plug them in. All right, so I went ahead and put the fairing back on. I wanted to get an idea of uh, where I wanted the handlebars to be for my comfort level. And this looks about right for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down the riser clamp. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and cable the uh, left and right switch harness as along with the throttle by wire. So, the left has the single connector. And then the right has the, the dual connector. Here's your throttle by wire. And good to go. I also put the uh, skirt, the outer fairing skirt on. Uh, you will have to uh, kind of wiggle this a little bit because the bottom is moving back and forth, obviously from you moving the fairing around. So I'm gonna put the uh, top double stud on the right side here. And make sure you have the uh, cable for the turn signals. Now I'll put the uh, right side turn signal on. First connect the plug in. Make sure this is loose. Not being snug so it gets caught when you turn the, the forks. Acorn nut. So I've went ahead and installed uh, the hydraulic clutch, but what you'll notice here is the cable for the hydraulic clutch is kind of protruding out. I need to straighten that up, so I'll have to loosen the banjo bolt. So just loosen that up, make sure you don't get air in the lines, obviously that'd be a bad thing. 
and you also have to need you need to do that on both sides not just for the clutch but the brake also as you can see i got both the uh brake and clutch on i want to turn it make sure i got full range of motion nothing's catching and it looks good i'll have to check that again once i do the heated grip now i'm gonna have to take these back off to, or at least loosen them so i can get the control switches on the left and right and then obviously the grips all right i'm gonna start with uh, putting my heated grip on um, as you can see here is the plug-in for that and this has an external power wire some of the other ones have a internal power that will be plugged in <clears throat> into an auxiliary port in the inside the fairing um, so if you just happen to have this you probably it came with a very long cable i have it running underneath the uh, gas tank and into the uh, battery so i just kind of snipped some zip ties and then pulled it up a little bit to loosen it give me a little bit more room so when i turn the forks but i'm gonna go ahead and plug this in <clears throat> and then what will happen is i will shove this in here but we'll you're going to have to, there's a notch here. There's two notch, two notches here. I don't know how well you can see that. Let me show you. There's some notches here that are going to catch on your uh, left switch housing. So you'll just kind of have to twist those together. So I'll snap that in. See that notch will catch and just kind of figure out you know where you want to put your switches as you can tell it ain't going nowhere once you tighten it up now you want to kind of leave this a little bit loose because we might have to adjust as we put the hydraulic clutch on as well there's a little button back in here behind the switch housing that your clutch is gonna hit. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on the right side. Here is my other heated grip, which I'll plug into the throttle by wire. You'll see the two prongs here, and they will be inserted here. But for now, I'll just slide this on, snap this on in place. Make sure it gets around that grip. You want to make sure that runs freely with the throttle. Leave this loose because you're going to have to do some play just trying to figure out what, uh, what position you want this to be for your comfort. Now I'm going to bring the brake up to the bars all right now i'm going to take the two prong final connection for the heated grips and then plug it straight into the throttle by wire and then we'll put the cap on all right good to go all right so now we're going to put the trip button back on should slide right in This is also a good time to remove your side mirrors. Uh, the bars just kind of get in the way of uh, the visibility. I actually bought some another set of uh, mirrors for the bike. So I got these KST tabs along with the bars. I'm gonna stick them in the hole where the side mirrors used to be. So they should just pop in like so. All right, I'm gonna put the fairing back on. I've already got my lights plugged back in. So just make sure everything goes back real sealed and tight. Make sure any wires are out of the way. And 
The weather trim looks good on it. And that looks good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, windshield back in, windshield trim, and the backs. Do a little cleaning before I do that first though. So as you can see, I got the uh, windshield windshield trim and then the bags are on. Now all I need to do is get the inner fairing. You got the two bolts, long one on top, short one on bottom, both sides. All right, so that completes the KST handlebar install. I wanted to point out a couple things. One thing is before you get everything put back together, go ahead and test the electrical, the switches, the lights, uh, turn signals and so forth and see if you can start the bike. But I'm sure you already knew that, but just wanted to point it out. The other thing is, is this is actually my fault, but I actually put the bars on and I realized the bars were actually bent. They came in the box warped or bent in such a way. And I noticed that one side of the bars was closer to the fairing than the other. So I called KST. They offered a couple suggestions that didn't work. They offered to send another set of bars, which they did, got here in two days. So fantastic customer service. It's my fault, I should have checked it. But at the same time, I just assumed that they were good to go. But I would highly recommend setting the bars in the riser, making sure that they are you know, equally distributed across each side and one side is not necessarily closer to the fairing. And that's pretty much it. Great company to work with, KST, highly recommend them. Appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Please like, share, and subscribe, and always rip the ride. See ya.